Howdy team, happy Thursday. I hope you guys are having a great day. As you can see, I have a clean whiteboard. Um, man, the weekend went so, 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 so well. Uh, thank you for praying for D-Now, and thank you for helping with D-Now, too. That was uh, really magnificent. So so now we're on the planet for mission trips. Y'all pray about that. Guys, let's jump into the lesson because it's so, so good. We're looking at Jesus calling the disciples, and, it, and it's going to be a fun conversation that I think will be helpful to everyone. Uh, for starters, I will say I, I really like both options because I think they both serve a cool purpose. Uh, option number one, uh, just painting the pictures of, of how wild it was that Jesus called the disciples and they just got up and left, although I will give you more background on that. that that'll make a little bit more sense. Um, but then number two, just having the students talk about the different groups they experience at school, uh, that's a big deal uh, because ultimately that's where the lesson's going to go. So it, pick either one of those, do them both if you want to, but I think they're both pretty good. Um, but let's talk about Peter, Andrew, James, and John first. What you need to know for starters is this actually wasn't the first time they encountered Jesus. Even though we're looking at Matthew right now, um, keep in mind the Gospels are all intermingled. They're telling the same story, and they're not always necessarily in, in chronological order. Um, really what you need to look at when you're studying for your lesson is, is look at Matthew chapter 4, look at John chapter 1, and look at Luke chapter 5, because they're all telling the same story, again, intertwined with each other. Peter, Andrew, James, and John first encountered Jesus, specifically Andrew and John first encountered Jesus when he came to John the Baptist. Andrew and John were disciples of John the Baptist first. And one day Jesus came walking by and John looks at him and says, hey, behold the Son of God who takes away the sins of the world. And and both Andrew and John looked at John the Baptist and said, hey, if that, if that guy's him, well, we're going with him. And they left John the Baptist and followed Jesus. Later on that day, at least it sounds like it was that day, Andrew says says to his older brother, says, hey, uh, older brother, older brother, we found the Messiah. Come and meet him. So Peter comes and meets Jesus for the first time. And this is where, where Jesus, um, actually his name was Cephas at the time. This is when Jesus changes his name, so, which is, again, kind of a crazy thing to do for the first time you meet someone, but that's what he did. He says, hey, your name's Cephas. I'm going to call you Peter instead. And then it was later on, I'm not sure how much time has passed in between these two situations, when Jesus actually walks up, this Luke chapter 5, Jesus is walking along the beach and he says to Peter, hey, can I use your boat to preach a sermon? And Peter, who had been fishing all night and caught nothing, said, sure, no problem. So Jesus preaches a sermon from the boat. And then after that's over, he helps Peter catch a huge, huge amount of fish. And then he says to Peter, hey, come and follow me. And he does. Now, even though he had met Jesus before, I still think this is truly amazing just to get up and leave your career. And also, it really is important to note, to leave all of those fish, because that's literally money laying on the beach, to leave all those fish and to follow Jesus. That's a big deal. And that's what Jesus was calling the disciples to do, to, to sacrificially come and, 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 and follow him. So uh, that's worth pointing out. It wasn't their first time to meet Jesus, but it's still a big deal. What you do need to know, and probably the bigger deal out of this lesson, though, is the fact that these guys really, at least in their base selves, would not have gotten along well. And the, the lesson does a good job of explaining why, uh, excuse me, Andrew, Peter, James, and John wouldn't have gotten along with Matthew. Tax collectors and commoners don't get along because commoners complain and tax collectors gouge people for their money. Literally, the Romans said that, hey, here's the cut that you have to give us, and we don't care what else you require of the people. You, were, you, you take whatever money you want to be paid from them, and they can't fight with you. And they had literally a Roman soldier standing there to enforce whatever the tax collector said. So, so really, Matthew would have been considered a traitor. But let me throw another disciple in there just to make it more interesting. One of the other disciples was a guy named Simon the Zealot. A zealot was someone that we would call a freedom fighter. Literally, zealots were the people who were constantly um, fighting, physically fighting, inciting violence to try to secure the freedom of the Israeli people. Well, nobody liked those guys because when the Romans would come in to put down the violence from the zealots, they would also um, they would tend to enact some sort of punishment on everyone else too, just to set an example. And so the commoners wouldn't have gotten along with the zealots, and the zealots certainly would have utterly despised the tax collectors, and the tax collectors would have despised the zealots. And then the zealot would have despised the commoners because in his mind he would have said, you guys are just sitting around doing nothing. We should be fighting for our freedom. These are the people that Jesus said, I'm going to make my team out of. This is who I'm going to build my church off of. It's incredible. And that's what he did. And so really, guys, the biggest point we can make in our lesson this week, we, I do want you to make a big deal out of repentance. That's super important. In fact, don't forget to point out to the fact that, that Jesus didn't talk to the disciples and everyone he was preaching to about repentance until after he had withstood temptation. 
And so he's talking about um, repentance and temptation, um, having shown them this is what it looks to to repel temptation. And so not only am I compassionate to you because I know how hard it is to deal with temptation, but I also have the authority to tell you to repent. So bring up the, the repentance part. That's a big deal. But intentionally move the students to just consider how we all as a group, and we can start as a youth group, but then we need to move out as a church family as a whole. So students getting along with children and students getting along with the elderly. And we're, that's something we're going to keep working on. This is what the kingdom of God looks like. This is what Christ is calling us to. And despite the fact that we have diverse backgrounds and different kinds of sides, those are pocketbooks. And um, our youth group is just a little bit more colorful all the time, which I love too. And we're all from different schools and cities and it's awesome. At the end of the day, we're a family, and this is what Jesus is making us, and he is the center point. He's the reason that we're gathering, and so we've got to keep him the focus. Guys, I love y'all. I'll see you soon. Bye.